We reviewed the HTC One over a month ago, but ever since our guided tour of the camera on the Samsung Galaxy S4, viewers like you have been clamoring for us to whip up a similar video for HTC's Android flagship. Okay, I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is your guided tour of the camera on the HTC One. Much breath has been expended on whether the One's 4-megapixel primary camera with its oversized or ultra pixels is worth all the hoopla HTC claims, but we're not going to get into that conversation again here. For more on whether the ultra pixel camera on the One is right for you, check out our multiple device reviews and camera comparisons at pocketnow.com, and while you're at it, follow us on social media so you don't miss future content. For now, it's enough to say that if you use your smartphone camera principally for casual shots and social media sharing, the One will probably offer more than enough functionality for you. Understanding how to use the One's camera starts with knowing how to open it, because it's important a camera app opens quickly when you're trying to get a time-sensitive shot in. The most straightforward way is to tap the camera icon in the dock when the phone is in standby, and unlike on other devices, that also works from the lock screen. There's no drag or fancy gesture here, just tap it to open. It's not quite as handy as a dedicated camera key, which we wish every phone had, but it works. The shortcut is present in most lock screen modes, including Photo Album, which scrolls images from a selected gallery on your lock screen. Jumping into the camera, you'll notice the first thing the software does is show you how much memory is remaining in terms of minutes of video and number of stills you can capture. That's handy, but it does vanish after a second to get out of the way. We'll mention here that we are running an older software version on our HTC One due to an update problem. The updates haven't changed much in the viewfinder, though, so this should look similar, if not identical, to those running updated builds. Starting on the lower right, we see HTC's Filters folder, some preset overlays you can apply to photos before shooting them. These are nothing new if you've played with previous HTC smartphone cameras, and other manufacturers have gotten into the filter game too, but HTC really has the most useful and fun range of filters for our taste, including some with adjustable intensity depending on how subtle you're feeling. We'll also note here that the One offers the standard touch-to-focus support, allowing you to decide where you want the camera to focus in a long shot. You'll notice that the camera will also take its exposure level from the area you tap on as well. That's typical for HTC, and also typical is that this effect is a little exaggerated, with wilder swings compared to other devices. On the upper right is a thumbnail of the last photo or video taken, which also doubles as a shortcut to the gallery. Between that and the filter toggle are the two most important buttons on the camera, the shutter release for still photos and the record button for video. Now these are always displayed, with no need to switch modes between stills and video, an outstanding time saver that HTC pioneered in modern Android smartphones. The last item on the right hand side is the zoom slider. Of course there's no optical zoom here, even though there is optical image stabilization, so digital will have to do. But it's a handy slider to have around, considering the volume keys don't work as zoom toggles as they do on other devices, at least not by default. Pinch to zoom is supported as well, if you're used to that. In the upper left is the flash selector, which lets you manually control whether the flash is set to on, off, or automatic based on light level. In the left center is the dedicated toggle for Zoe, probably one of the most talked about features of the HTC One. At first glance, Zoe's just look like short videos, and you wonder what the point is. Well, aside from brightening up the gallery, Zoe's offer a lot more utility. Because they're hybrid captures, 3.6 seconds of HD video alongside about 20 still frame captures at 6 frames per second. The photos that you can scrub after the fact to find the best one you want to keep. It's a much more elegant solution than burst shot, but that feature is still here, found just by holding down the shutter release. You can capture up to 20 shots in just a couple seconds, and the software can even choose what it thinks is the best shot while discarding the rest. Sometimes it works well, and other times not so much. But you always have the option to save or delete all photos. You won't notice a front camera selector in the One's camera viewfinder because HTC has made it invisible. To shoot a self-portrait, you just swipe the screen up from the bottom or down from the top to switch to the 2 megapixel wide-angle front-facing shooter. It's tapping anywhere on the screen, then starts a two-second countdown to a still shot, hopefully minimizing jiggle that would otherwise result from a button press. Jumping into the menu on the bottom left corner, we can see the deeper level customizations HTC offers. Up top is a toggle to switch between main and secondary cameras in case you don't like or don't know about the swipe action. The next one down is the scene selector, which allows you to optimize the camera for the usual portrait and landscape shooting modes, 
as well as more exotic alternatives like text mode. This appears to increase contrast and sharpness to call out letters, while backlight does its best to compensate for those occasions when the sun is behind your subject. Macro is of course for close-up shots, and while we generally find performance to be just fine in automatic mode for close-ups, macro is useful in extreme situations. Below the scene submenu are a couple modes HTC thinks you might use more often. Night mode improves on the one's already excellent low-light performance, not by illuminating more of the scene, but by reducing noise levels on what is captured, it seems. And of course, there's our old favorite HDR for high dynamic range photos, taking multiple photos at multiple exposures stitched together to create one nicely balanced image, usually. And the last option in the photo capture mode submenu is sweep panorama, which offers the nice inclusion of an artificial horizon to keep you steady while you take your shot. We've talked about the One's video performance in other contexts, and we're focused mainly on photos in this tour, but the One's camcorder does offer several modes for high and low speed filming in addition to video HDR. Further down are simple settings like the self-timer duration, just in case you've got a smartphone tripod with you and you want a self-portrait, as well as a cropping selector for square or rectangular shots. The default setting is wide on our unit. Then, for some reason, there's a video quality selector. Not really sure why this isn't paired with video capture settings above. And rounding out the simple stuff is review duration, which lets you choose how long after you snap a shot you want to see the photo you just took. Diving a little deeper, we open the image adjustments category to find individual sliders for exposure, contrast, saturation, and sharpness. We're used to seeing exposure control on viewfinders, but seeing individual adjustments for the other three is pretty rare. It's also rare that most folks will use these, as these tweaks can be made with photo editing software after the fact, even right on the device. As we explained in our Galaxy S4 camera tour, ISO refers to the sensitivity of the image sensor. The lower the number, the less sensitive the sensor, and the finer the grain. You can force the ISO manually higher to capture more light in darker situations, but the picture will be much noisier and the one's low-light performance is so good anyway that most folks will probably want to leave ISO in automatic. White balance refers to the desire to keep objects that are white looking white, and it allows you to compensate for lighting that might affect that, like incandescent or fluorescent bulbs and even direct or cloudy sunlight. Continuous shooting governs settings for the burst mode we illustrated before, including the option to disable the 20 photo limit. Face detection will set focus to prefer faces the camera detects, and auto smile capture allows the one to withhold shooting until it detects that a subject is smiling, a fun, if gimmicky, feature. There's also support here for geotagging as well. Shutter options contain a feature that, to some, is the holy grail, the ability to disable the shutter sound when snapping a photo. There's also an option here to replicate a feature from Windows Phone. Enabling it allows you not just to tap and focus, but tap, focus, and shoot all with one action. At this point in the menu, we start to wonder why HTC decided against a tabbed approach. But not to worry, we're near the bottom. Another wayward video option here allows us to lock focus when shooting, disabling the autofocus mode we prefer. Below that is the toggle for the photographer's grid, assisting with rule of third type composition. And below that, the ability to auto-upload photos. But sadly, the sole option offered is Flickr, which we don't use. But if you do, hooray! Thankfully, other apps like Google Plus offer similar functionality. Lastly, of course, just in case you've messed everything up and want the nuclear option, is the option to reset the camera software back to its defaults. This is your hall pass to experiment with settings as much as you like, so do it. Once you get the hang of which ones to fiddle with and which ones to leave alone, these settings all lead to photos which hopefully come out balanced and looking just the way you intended. If not, you can use the One's powerful on-device editing suite to apply filters, add frames, and even retouch photos by removing red eye and face shine, adjusting lighting, and cropping, flipping, and rotating to your heart's content. It's a very in-depth editor, and it will eliminate the need for most folks to look to third-party apps to tweak their photos. It's a very nice piece of software to have on board. The finished shots end up in a gallery that, thanks to an innovative but intuitive layout and features like Zoe, is much more alive and much more fun than other manufacturers' gallery apps. We've covered this gallery, along with HTC's Video Highlights and HTC Share, in an earlier video. Go check that out. In the interim, 
we hope we've shown you that, as on the Galaxy S4, the real story isn't in what the raw camera hardware can do, but the fun the camera software lets you have. And on the HTC One, that's a lot of fun. Plenty for the mythical average consumer. That's going to do it for your guided tour of the HTC One camera. If there's something we missed, leave us a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, throw us a like. And hey, nearly 300,000 subscribers can't be wrong. Subscribe to our channel if you don't want to miss our future content. Also, follow us on our social media outlets and stay tuned for a lot more from Pocket Now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.